Often when growing cannabis, it can feel like you're pushing a stone up a hill. It can be quite the battle. Uh, in particular, non-disease challenges facing cannabis growers uh, can be an area that trips a lot of people up. So I'm going to cover some of those here, so hopefully you can identify it. It won't be a major problem for you. So looking at some of the challenges here. Growers often think a plant does not look normal, it is diseased. They immediately go to the disease aspect. When really it could be something that's not disease oriented. And being able to identify that early is beneficial. While uh, the disease can often be the case, non-disease issues uh, that's causing the problem, even though it may appear to be a disease. So it's kind of like figuring out a chess game here, where there's always a different challenge, something being presented. You've got to be able to kind of look by that, look through that, and identify it properly, whether it is disease or something that is not disease related. You have to realize your power as a grower uh, in what conditions you have control over and what you do not have control over. With indoor operations, there's very few conditions a grower does not have control over. Uh, however, you need to recognize what conditions uh, you deem ideal uh, and how you're going to meet those and how you're going to monitor those targets. If you're growing outdoors, you have a lot less uh, control, so it can be a little bit more of a challenge. Indoors, you can see the picture of the cat and the lion in the shadow, a lot more uh, control, but you got to know what you want uh, your growing area to be and how you're going to monitor and meet those goals. So knowing those targets is kind of the first thing. Now, what areas can you control? What areas should you be targeting? Well, in no particular order, what temperature you're going to run the room at, uh, what humidity level do you want to be, uh, the air circulation, the irrigation, the nutrients use, and throughout the growth cycle, and carbon dioxide concentration. All of these things come together to make a successful grow room. If any one of these gets way out of control, it can significantly reduce yields and uh, cause the others to be of less importance. So you're only as strong as your weakest target condition here in the environment. Uh, temperature, again, in these, in humidity can vary depending on the growth stage, so be mindful of that. So just know what your targets are for the particular stage of plant that you have. You want to have a check system, so alarms or alerts are great. Uh, and you also yourself want to check the plants at a consistent time so you know if something's off. Either checking it right after a pump comes on, right after a pump comes off, after a light comes on our light should go off is just a good way to kind of have that kind of is everything okay or should there be something i should be uh, concerned about having alarms or alerts if temperatures get too high or too low is another way you can kind of add that 24-hour monitoring another thing you should be able to know when something is abnormal as a result if you know what the normal should be it'll be easy it'll be easy for you to identify the abnormal now in this case here we see the cannabis plants of you know not quite green color it could be with the cultivar, uh, so that's not to say a bad thing. Or if we're supposed to have that green plant, we see these clovers here. Well, this one kind of looks a little off color, so this would kind of be an abnormal one. So by knowing the normal, knowing what we should expect, we can tell whether we have something uh, pushing on various extremes from that normal, either really too dark green or too light green, or what color should we expect. So it's just having that idea as a grower, so you can identify uh, something as... Uh, abnormal and the sooner you can identify it the quicker you can go about correcting that potential issue. 